Hi, I'm Dr. Christine Anderson, or Dr. Chris as my patients call me, and I am a chiropractor who specializes and is board certified in chiropractic pediatrics and pregnancy, and I also hold a certification in childhood developmental disorders, and I have been in practice for over 30 years in Los Angeles. So I am coming on to talk about the rooting reflex, which is an infantile reflex or primitive reflex. And this is a series that I will be doing, talking about all of these reflexes, what they are, why they're important, what they mean, and also what it means if they don't integrate or if they remain retained. So let's just get right on the rooting reflex. Um, but before we do, I want to uh, just note, I did an introduction to neurologic reflexes. I'll put the link to this in the description about reflexes in general. And then I also did an overview of the primitive reflexes. And I highly recommend that you visit these two videos um, at some point, maybe even uh, before you finish watching this one, just to get some background on what these are. Okay, so the rooting reflex actually develops in utero between about 28 to 30 weeks, and it's needed for survival. So where this can be an issue is if you have a premature baby who's born before this time, they may not have this rooting reflex present, and if it is not present, they may have trouble taking in nourishment because that reflex is not there to turn the head and open the mouth when it is stimulated. And this is what is needed in order to take in nourishment. So uh, you can take a finger on a baby and rub it on their cheek, either way, just stimulating here, and they're going to turn towards the finger and open their mouth in readiness for if mom is breastfeeding the nipple, if the baby's bottle feeding the nipple of the bottle. So this gets the mouth open nice and wide and the baby is ready to nurse or take a bottle. And so this is one of the major things that babies need to do to survive and thrive. So what happens if this uh, primitive reflex is not there? Let's say the baby's full term, so there's no reason that it shouldn't be there, but uh, you're stroking the cheek and nothing's happening. The head isn't turning, the mouth isn't opening, or it happens on one side and not the other. What does this mean? Well, it means that there is something going on with the brainstem. The brainstem is where the primitive reflexes are located, including the rooting reflex. And this is at the junction of the spinal cord and the brain. And I go into this into that introduction to reflexes and primitive reflexes. And there's involvement of the cranial nerves. There's 12 cranial nerves, and there are three of them that are involved in the rooting reflex. And guess what? These cranial nerves are located in the brainstem. So birth itself is, um, I don't want to call it a traumatic event, but there's a lot going on. And if the baby's head is not completely lined up optimally, or if there's some birth interventions or some birth trauma, this back of the neck here where the brainstem is located is one of the vulnerable areas to compression um, either by the occipital bone where the foramen magnum is, which is where the brainstem is located, or the upper cervical vertebra where the spine begins, the brainstem is located right there, or the dural system, which is what the cranial bones are moving so that fluid can move around it. And again, I talk about all these things in the other episodes, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. And then after the baby is born, contraptions are a great way to put stress on the upper neck and spine um, including the necessary evil of car seats. So just 
babies going in and out of the car, not staying in a car seat, and other things like swings and bouncy seats and some of the using a wrap before a baby is able to hold their head up and that type of thing can create tension and stress at the base of the skull and the top of the neck, which is where the brain stem is located. So here's a diagram showing all the cranial nerves, although I've cut off a little bit here, but you can see cranial nerve five, trigeminal, seven, facial, and 11, which is the spinal accessory nerve. Those are all part of this. So sensory aspect of the trigeminal feeling, the sensation. The facial nerve is the, the part that opens the mouth. And then the spinal accessory turns the head towards that stimulus of stroking the cheek. So in my world, this tells me that there's some compression there at the brainstem area. And I just had this happen uh, with a newborn two months and she's really not having a great uh, rooting reflex. And this is something I can monitor as I'm doing the treatment to see if that tension is coming off of the brainstem. And there's some other markers too, which I'll talk about in future episodes of some other primitive reflexes that are also affected. So I did a video on cranial sacral therapy because this is one of the treatments that I use a lot. And you can see me there. I've got my hand underneath this baby's head and I'm assessing their palate and their suck with my finger in their mouth and feeling what's going on there, as well as directing energy towards the back of their head, which is where the occiput is, which is where the brainstem is located. So I highly advise you go check out this video, which explains the whole cranial sacral therapy and how it can be useful for babies. All right, now what if we have an older child? They're, uh, they've got their rooting reflex, there wasn't a problem with that, but what if it stays retained? What if they don't integrate that reflex, which should occur about three to four months? So you're stroking their cheek or uh, you know going towards their mouth, and they may do a full-on reflex. They may turn towards it and open their mouth, like full-on, just like you would see in a newborn. Or they may just kind of turn their head a little bit. They may just have their, their you know, lip kind of twitch a little bit. It might be ticklish around that area. You might just see little muscle movements, so there can be gradations of whether it's mild, moderate, or really, really active. So you can try this on your children at home and you can use your finger. I oftentimes use my finger. You can also use a paintbrush and you don't want it to be too rough. Think about a newborn baby with, um, you know, mom's nipple. It's a gentle touch. So you don't want to dig in there. It's pretty um, light. It's a light sort of feathery touch. So what can this mean? What might you see in a child who has a retained rooting reflex? Well, maybe they have food texture issues or they are sucking their thumb or sticking objects in their mouth. Um, they might have dribbling or drool a lot. They might have speech and articulation issues because of where the tongue is moving and where it's located. They have trouble forming words. They also can have trouble with chewing and swallowing. And if you notice too, a lot of these things such as speech, chewing, swallowing are also involving cranial nerves. So go figure, right? It's all connected. And then some other things you might not think about are hormone imbalances. So this is another indication that uh, the rooting reflex might be involved and maybe something you want to check if there are other things going on with your child and they have a retained rooting reflex, especially the thyroid gland. And also dexterity issues while talking. So in other words, they might have trouble with um, chewing gum and writing or talking while they're writing. So things involving the hands as well as the mouth 
they cannot they they can't disconnect the two things and so they might have a difficult time so what are some things that we can do well there are some remediation exercises and it's really the same thing that i do when i'm testing to see if this reflex is present because if it is present and not retained and retained and not integrated then you have to use the reflex and initiate the movement that is going on so that the brain can be stimulated to integrate. So you can see in this cute little girl here, I've got the whiskers, I call this the whisker exercise, and I've got arrows going both ways. And it's not that you do one way on one side and the other on the other side, but you can go either way. You can try stroking towards the mouth and that might get a reaction, or you can try sto stroking away from the mouth and that might get a reaction. So it might be different movements. You might need to try both and see which one is having a better effect. Another type of exercise you can do, and same thing for the testing, is uh, what we call a perioral stimulation or stroking amount around the mouth. And you can literally, um, you know, you can use the idea of uh, a, the nasolabial fold here, stroking in a downward pattern. And you can either just do it one side and then the other side, or sometimes I will have parents go all the way around the mouth in one direction and then go all the way around the mouth in the other direction. And sometimes you will see children just lay there so still as you're doing it. It's like, if it does feel good to them, so this shouldn't be one of those ones that's really hard to do. So I uh, can always be reached at Los Angeles-Chiropractor. If you have any questions or concerns or want me to check out your child, if they're a newborn or a small, small child to make sure that reflex is present, you would not believe how many times I see babies, they've already been in for their pediatric checkup, and they have absent primitive reflexes, and either the medical pediatrician is not checking them, or they check them, they see the reflex isn't there, but they don't have anything in their tool belt, two belt to help. It's really beyond their scope of practice, and so they just don't do anything. So this is super concerning. So you can try to do these, these things at home, and if you see that you're not eliciting a rooting reflex in your newborn baby who's under three to four months, and you need to get that checked out. If you're in L.A., you can have me check that out, or we can do it remotely so I can see if you're technique is good, or I can also possibly help you find somebody in your area. But um, this is a great way to see about your child's neurologic development from an early age and get them started off really, really well so that the rungs of the ladder are developing one at a time, one after the other, and so big problems don't occur. All right. Stay tuned for next week, same time, 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. You can either catch me live or on the replay on YouTube at um, Los Angeles. Uh, sorry, no, Dr. Christine Anderson, chiropractor. That's my YouTube channel. And uh, I don't really know which primitive reflex I'm going to do next time. So stay tuned. Have a great week. And um, I will see you then. Bye.